What's going on there, guys? We back with another one, and we got to talk about Caitlin Clark some more today. Now, we got to rewind a little bit to prior to the WNBA draft where Ice Cube was talking about offering her a deal for the big three, two years, $10 million, part ownership of the league, uh, some merch splits, all types of stuff. And, you know, it was a conversation when people were looking at the WNBA salaries and how much she was going to stand to make as the number one pick. Uh, opposed to what Ice Cube was offering just for two years, $10 million, right? And um, another conversation was like, she, you know, she can't play with those men. She ended up getting hurt, you know, and uh, could really jeopardize her playing career because uh, it's a lot more physical in the big three as far – and I – well, I shouldn't say more physical, but the strength of the players and stuff like that um, and, and the hard fouls, would she would really feel it. So – I was interested to see kind of how that was going to go uh, for her, but I think she made a wise decision as far as the basketball just being played on the court. And I didn't know what all it entailed and what Cube had planned, but just, you know, men should be playing with men and women should be playing with women. That's how I feel about it. Um, but it was an interesting offer, right? But I think the deals that Caitlin Clark got as far as like Nike, um, some of her other major corporation deals, right? Um, you know, Ice Cube already talked about how the NBA was telling sponsors not to work with the big three. So anything big that Caitlin Clark got, I think, was tied into her going, you know, to the WNBA playing with the Indiana Fever. So here we are today. But he sat down with Dan Patrick. He talked with him on his show and he spoke about exactly what they were going to offer Caitlin Clark. Let's check it out. Does the offer still stand to Caitlin Clark? Uh, nah, we, we've... Uh... We've moved on. Uh, we see that she uh, is focused on the WNBA. Um, and, you know, we really didn't get great engagement from the offer from their team. You know, I think the agents was hating on it a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, we were worried about, you know, the players that we have. You know, it's, you know, we, we think we're going to have our best season. Uh, because the matchups are, you know, teams are so evenly matched, and um, they know they know the game now. You know, they know how to win in the big three, and so uh, we can't wait till Saturday. What was the offer, official offer to Caitlin? It was two years, five million dollars a year, uh, and plus, you know, we were going to do cool stuff with merch and. You know, I think uh, he was even talk about uh, percentage and team ownership. Mm. You know, we were going to, you know, we believe her coming into the big three would be such a big deal that, you know, all boats would rise and the league would, would benefit from the attention and to see, you know, if she can actually do it against, against this competition. So, but, uh, but it would be great. If she doesn't go to the Olympics, there's a window there where she's not playing WNBA, maybe a guest baller. Uh, nah. You moved on. Okay. I think, I think, yeah. All right. You know, you know, we, we know how to uh, take no for an answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Ice Cube response to, um, you know, Caitlin Clark choosing the WNBA over the big three. And obviously, that would have been a cool thing to do, you know, throw that money. I know people was like, he should offer Angel Reese, he should offer this one, that one, because they're better players. But what Q was trying to do is catch lightning in the bottle. And for business, you know, Caitlin gets that offer in this moment. Now, who knows what Caitlin's name will be two to five years from now. It could grow or that hype could kind of die down. We just don't know which way it's going to go. But right now, it made business sense for the big three who's looking to uh, elevate and get – a step up, you know, as far as eyes, viewership, they're trying to get that person, you know, to come play with them. And so um, looking at that, I'm like, man, you know, Cube, uh, that, that was brilliant. But I think the team around Caitlin Clark, they stopped all that. They really took it serious, you know. And obviously Caitlin's dream as a young woman is to get to the WNBA to play against the best women's players in the world. Can't fault her for that. Because you do dream of winning a championship, uh, being on the Olympic team one day, stuff like that. Stuff you wouldn't have been able to do in the big three. But the ownership could be intriguing, and I'll be looking to see how much that league expands. Um, you know, it could be defunct in 10 years, or it could just 
They could grab onto some kind of mega star. It could come from social media anywhere. See, that's what has even the playing field with some of this stuff. It, all it takes is the right person or the right group of people with the right following and bringing them into the league and letting it just skyrocket from there. So um, it, it could come back to bite Caitlin that she didn't choose that. Some ownership into something is always an intriguing decision uh, Decision you have to mull over a little bit because, you, you know, if it does work out, man, when you're not playing, your body can't get up and down the floor, you just collecting, that, that could be really nice. Um, again, but I, I think, Caitlin, you know, that $28 million from Nike, you take that in the right now for sure uh, over the next, what is it, uh, what, seven years, something like that, six, seven years for that deal. And so she's got that locked in, and, and that's impressive. You know, that, that hasn't been done. And so I, I don't fault her for it. I'm just looking at, you know, if the big three does expand and becomes this big three-on-three -three league internationally, then – you know, that, that's going to be huge. That's going to be huge. Um, but I don't know, man. I think Cube and them, I, th I think the way that they're thinking, though, and how he was trying to revolutionize the game uh, a bit with that, I think they will eventually land the right social media star or person that's coming from college. Who knows, right? Uh, j just the right talent with the right kind of – visibility um now what they will have to watch is the nba trying to poach people from them if they do land that player and they're good enough um but i, I do like the idea of trying to bring caitlin in that shows that you know they're thinking outside the box and they know that their league you know 10 years from now hopefully you done found a few people that has captivated the audience because you're not competing with the nba um like Cube said, they made it competition, but you are trying to get that one thing for viewership that, that brings people in, you know, that, that brings them all the way in. Those are the details of it, though, man, and people were wondering, like, exactly what the deal was. It was a lot put out in articles, but you heard it right here from Ice Cube's mouth. They were going to offer Caitlyn two years, 10 million merch, um, you know, and, and some ownership in the league. And you can't really beat that, man, um, with where you at right now. But we're going to see, man. We're going to see. We're going to see. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time, peace. Skip tweeted something, and although I disagree with the tweet, uh, and, and uh, hopefully uh, Skip would take it down. No, I'm not going to take it down. Oh. Skip, 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 skip.